Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday. And we're doing this a little bit earlier in the week. Um, usually we do our best plays video on Thursday, followed by betting and line of construction Friday. But have a little time, and I think I'm ready to get into this already. Now, there could be fights that uh, drop off and things like that. And if so, maybe I'll put an updated uh, updated video. But uh, I'm, I think it's pretty clear what we want to do here. And we are going to go through the, the favorite plays. And I'm going to talk a little bit about lineup construction on this video, which I usually reserve for that last video, either Friday or Saturday morning, when it comes to you know, just trying to figure out how to win that 200,000 or whatever for the, for the big GPP. But I think it's pretty clear what you're supposed to do on this slate in general. And I want to start with the main event. Um, so you have Israel Adesanya versus uh, Drikas Duplessis. And this is, you know, whenever you have an Israel Adesanya card, uh, it's, it's a different type of card because he always has, you know, listen, he's, he's the champ or was the champ, whatever he is. He's a great fighter, one of the best fighters. And um, he's always either the favorite or at least close to being the favorite. And for DFS purposes, he's always a bad play. Um, he, he is a pure striker who has, I mean, literally no grappling. And he doesn't really go for the early finishes. He, he likes to, to, to stay at range to show what a great striker he is and, and pick the, his opponents apart. Now, every once in a while, he will get a knockout. But in general, that's not where his his bread is buttered. And, and from a DFS uh, standpoint, he's uh, almost unplayable every single week that he fights. And yet still, people play him um, be, because he's it's a five-round fight. And from a median projection perspective, he, he's going to project okay. You know, it's not going to be... It's not like he's going to project lower than some of these other, you know, 8K fighters. Or maybe he will, but uh, people just, again, even though at this stage in the cycle, people are better at this than they used to be with DFS, people still like to play these named fighters who are good fighters without really having much of a regard for their DFS, up, DFS upside. And yet, on the other hand, you have Drikas Duplessis, who all the guy does is score fantasy. I mean, you look at his his results here, but look, look at all of his, almost all of his wins. I mean, it's like 120, 114, 119, 126. I mean, this one, I guess back in July of 2022, um, he had 80. So, I mean, I guess not all of them, but every other one is over a hundred points. And um, most of them are in three rounds. So uh, in his wins, he's just, going to smash he just always does so what what do you do with this fight well th there are a couple of ways you can approach this and i'm going to suggest one particular way one is this okay realize that he's going to win the fight to placebo about 50 percent of the time uh, give or take so what do you do with that well let's presume that he's going to be the opt in the optimal every time he wins. Now that's not exactly, you know, that's not correct. Obviously, there's no such things every time, but most of the time. So I would say that one way to play is 50% of your lineups should be Drikas Duplicy. Um, he's going to win the fight 50% of the time. And he's going to be optimal pretty much all the time that he wins. So you play 50% of the time. Uh, but then the question is, what do you do with the other 50%? Do you play Adesanya in this other 50% to make sure you have the main event? Um, or do you do something else? Now, the, the, the benefit of playing the Adesanya side is normally to, well, number one, you can get leverage against who what's going to be the most popular fighter on the slate. I mean, I presume that Duplicy is going to be the most popular fighter on the slate. I mean, it could be one of these one of these big favorites, and there are plenty of them. That's the, that's the problem. There's so many good favorites that I don't think any one of them is going to get, get all the ownership. But Duplicy at 7,900 is just going to he's just going to get jammed, right? Um, the so if you do play it at Asanya and he beats Duplicy, you're going to get leverage on all those 50. But but the thing is, is that is that 
there's no guarantee that he's going to score well, even if he does win. Um, so, two, so my two suggestions for this card are number one, to just play duplicy in 50% of your lineups and then fade it aside and play zero of Adesanya at all. The other 50%, you're going to be contrarian and fade the fight completely, hoping that, you know, and we'll get to some of these favorites. I mean, they're, they're going to be scores put up by some of these guys and just hope you get a big enough combination that does not need duplicy somehow um, to, to, to get there. Now, again, think about this. Not, not doesn't need duplicy to get there. Remember, if duplicy wins, you're going to have them because it's 50% of your lives. But in the, the ones that he loses, okay, to Adesanya, those are the ones that you are going to fade. So the idea is that either duplicy wins or nobody wins from that fight. So you could either play 50%, in my opinion, either 50% Duplicy zero and 0% Adesanya, or what I'm recommending is the opposite, is something different. I'm recommending you just play 100% Duplicy, right? Um, and th there's a really weirdly subtle reason for that. Number one is, is obviously he's an amazing player. Uh, every time he wins, or not every time, most every time he wins is going to be in the album. But the other thing, and again, this is not really the way you're supposed to be handicapping DFS, but it's the way I think about it sometimes, is that it's the last fight of the night, right? So if you have 100% duplicy, you get to see everything that happened beforehand. And if, in fact, you know, you're lucky enough and, and playing 100% duplicy has allowed you to just scramble the right combination of the other fights, and you get to a position where if, if he wins – you're going to cash for a big number because this is just like almost a pick em fight. You can feel free to hedge with a win bet on Adesanya for as much as you want. Okay. It's a very liquid market. Um, as long as you keep enough money in to do this. Um, I think that it's a very responsible way to think about it. You know um, that if you do play hundred percent, which is a, which is not a bad play in and of itself to play hundred percent of him, get you over the field, no matter what, listen, no matter how much they play this guy, He's going to be less than 60, right? Maybe 60% owned. Can he be more than 60? Maybe. But even if he's a little over 60, you play 100, you're going to be ahead of the field on him. It gets you access to more of these combinations. And if you get a little nervous, you know, that that, that you have so much duplicy and you, you've succeeded in, in getting the rest of these combinations right, you have the option to, to attack this through the betting markets, which uh, something you weren't able to do a couple of years ago. So uh, that's what I recommend. Uh, as we get into this card, is uh, is to just lock in duplicy and then make the make the best out of the rest of your lineups. Um, anyway, uh, let's just get started then, because this is this is a, a card with just a ton of upside. Okay, especially in the favorites, but but you know uh, there are some underdogs that you could you could play also specifically in the mid range. We'll get there. Um, as a matter of fact, when I first looked at the at the uh, the fight lines. I think I noticed that uh, at least six fighters had an inside the distance line of better than minus 110. And that doesn't happen all too often, especially when you have only a 12 fight card. Like half of the fights involve a fighter who is favored to finish, not the fight favored to finish, has a fighter who's favored to finish. And that doesn't happen very, very frequently. Um, and as we'll see in those fights that we do not have a, uh, someone favored to finish, there's, there's, <laughs> there, in some sense, in some cases, a great amount of, of grappling ups. So let's take a look. First, let's look at um, Stuart Nicole against Jesus Aguiar. And um, right off the bat here, we have one of the, one of type B's. So you have Nicole inside the distance is not great, like a plus 200, but he's a really, really good grappler. And, and he could get, takedowns he can score a lot of points here um, in the absence of a finish so he's he's one of i mean unfortunately it's kind of hard to separate these guys but one of at least six like really really good favorites and i like him a lot uh aggie on the other hand uh plus 350 inside not the worst for 7k but again one, one of the things that that we look for in underdogs is number one having upside in their wins Obviously, if they have good money line value, that's fine too. But also, we, we're trying to find also of, of those underdogs that you have to pick from, 
who's going to get you leverage if in fact they win? Like what favorite that you're up against is going to be really highly owned? And uh, who that's going to be this week is not that easy. Um, I don't know if Nicole, I mean, Nicole is minus 230. You think he's going to be higher owned than some of these like minus 800 favorites? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, uh, I can't imagine that being the case. So that's the problem with the Aguiar play is it's kind of okay at plus 350 inside, but you don't get a lot of leverage. So he's just kind of all right. Uh, Kanan Song versus Ricky Glenn. This is, I think, the one fight. No, this is this is not one of the ones. This is one of the one one of the fights that does have a good inside the distance line, and it's it's really weird because Song himself is only minus one seventy five to win, but inside the distance is minus one twenty. That's huge for his price. I mean, he is he's eighty seven hundred minus one twenty to win. That's that's pretty good. Now, as you'll see, it pales in comparison to some of these others, but at eighty seven hundred. I mean, it's certainly a reasonable play. And as I go through this card, I want you to think about this. Remember, I've already said that I want to lock in Duplessis. And what that'll give me some context when I keep saying, well, this guy's good, this guy's okay, this guy's okay. Because the more combinations I have access to, the more I can kind of say, okay, this other guy's okay. Because I know that I don't have to worry about Asanya. And there's going to be guys that I X out that we're going to get to a little bit later. So I do like Kanan. Let's put in... Nicole, I do like Nicole too. Ricky Glenn just has nothing to offer here from a, from a DFS perspective. Is very little grappling, if anything, plus 425 inside. So that's not great. Now you get Tom Nolan versus Alex Reyes. Now this is, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Um, so he's minus 1,100 to win. Now he better be because his price is 9,800. Um. But before you you laugh about playing somebody's 9,800, I mean, you could get to him on this card. And let me share with you some of these metrics from this fight. I tried to guess myself what his inside the distance line was going to be if it was a minus 1,100 favorite. So I figured I would come up with something ridiculous. I'd say maybe minus 500 inside. And I looked at it. Inside the distance, he's actually minus 10 to 1. I mean, he's supposed to finish the fight 90% of the time. That is just kind of obscene. But at 9,800, finishing the fight isn't enough. I mean, you really need at that at worst, to fin at best, not at best, at least to finish the fight in the first round. And, well, that's good to know because no one in the first round is minus 185. And that's pretty ridiculous. Like 65 or whatever, 60% of the time, 65%, he finishes in the first round. So most of the time, he's going to score at least 100. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough price. But it's uh, there's no disputing the uh, you know the metrics here. Very very strong play. And if that's not good enough, let's look at Jack Jenkins. He's 9600. So again, at 9600, you better have some good inside the distance lines, and you do. Jenkins inside is minus what 350, I and mean, that's kind of insane. Um, I don't know though if if he's got that same. I don't know, say upside of some of these guys that we've seen at 9,600. I've seen him fight. I've seen him a couple of times. And, and he's, in fairness, he hasn't really had a, a chance to dominate somebody yet, right? He's had been in some, he's had some close matchups. He fought, fought Chepe Mariscal. He fought uh, Jamal Aarons. I mean, he's fought some tough guys. So it's hard for me to say, well, he hasn't really, you know, dominated a fight. He really hasn't had a chance. Um, he's minus 600 here with a big inside the distance line against the guy with, maybe one round of cardio. So uh, he certainly can get there. The other thing about Jenkins is that, is that he does have uh, some takedowns in his arsenal. He did have four takedowns against Sheamus. Um, but is that what he's really going to do? You know, he's, he's got good leg kicks. There's a kind of a bias now against wrestlers. So I think he's going to just try to strike. And if, if he's just going to try to strike, he's got one round. And maybe not even that to get this done. So uh, very, very good metrics, just like Nolan. But be careful. You know, like like oh, Nolan, Jenkins, this is a big price that you need the first round knockout. Um, and it'd be great if you got to take down and, and, the, the, and the, uh, the knockout. Or it'd be great if you had a knockdown and a knockout for sure. Maybe two. 
um, because these are tough prices to pay. All right, uh, moving on, Luana Santos versus Casey O'Neill. All right, so Santos, like everybody seems to love this one. Right, she's got three, three fights, two first rounds finishes. In those finishes, she's got 116, 101, and I've heard you know all kinds of talk that she's kind of a lot this week. And, and yet, and yet, she's only like minus one fifty. I mean, it's not like that big a deal. Um, and when you look at her inside the distance line, it's not. It's really not good. It's like plus three twenty. I mean, if you really think that she has all this upside, I mean, I encourage you to just go better in the in, in the prop market and not in DFS because this is this is a. If you get involved in playing like Santos because you know you you, you know ball and you know this fight or whatever, I mean you're giving up just like a lot of projection, you know. And you, you compare her with 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 uh, what's his name, um, Kanan even with like a minus one twenty inside the distance line compared to her like plus three hundred whatever that is, um, you can't play. Um, that's just the way it is. And if listen, if you told me she was going to go for a hundred takedowns, I would say fine. But I don't, I don't think it's like that with her. I think she's going to keep the. Oh, listen, last one I guess she did get a takedown. Maria, Maria Agapova's got the worst takedown defense in the world. She did get a bunch of control time against Stephanie Egger. Um, I guess that's good to see. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I hope she's low owned if you're going to play her, because on the metrics, just you know, the, nothing from this fight looks really good at all. Uh, all right. Um, Ricardo Ramos versus Josh Kulibau. All right. Let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. So Kulibau inside is plus 165. And at his price, that's not bad. Um, I might want to just pay up a couple of hundred dollars to get to the minus 120 of Song Kanang, especially considering, I mean, like, it's not as if Kulibau has. As, as takedowns, he's really just a pure striker. Um, if anybody's got the takedown upside, it's going to be Ramos here. So I, I actually do like the Ramos side of this for DFS because you are, listen, we're, we're playing Duplo C fine, but that's not enough. We have to get a couple more underdogs. In. And Ramos at 7,700, um, the bad news is from his, in his last two fights, he got subbed by a guillotine in the first round. But the good news is that he was able to get two takedowns in the first round. And four, five fights before that, four fights before, he got eight takedowns against Bill Alger. You know, so, so uh, for an underdog, he, he can certainly do enough, right? Um, so I definitely have included him in my, in my underdog. Um, all right, moving up, we have Justin Taffa versus, uh, uh, what's his name, Walter Walker. Uh, mid-range heavyweights, this is probably going to be in play without me even looking. You know, I, I bet you both these fighters are going to have, well, one of them at least, is going to have an inside the distance line of maybe plus 200 at 8K or whatever. And the other one, Walker, he has takedown upside. So I, without even looking, I know this is going to be a fight to target uh, both sides. And we'll take a look. Um, Tafa well, walk, Tafa inside is my, is plus one ten. I mean, his price that's like kind of ridiculous, um, ridiculously good. And Walker inside plus two eighty five is not a great inside the distance line, but again, he does have some takedown upside. So uh, I think both these fighters are very very good. I would look to play either or both of them. Carlos Prates versus uh, Li Jingliang. Um, 9,200, so he better have a good inside the distance line, and you know what? He does. I think it's over, again, better than minus 110. Where is this? Uh, minus 135, that's excellent. But think about it, like Sinan Kong is also minus one, same inside the distance line at $500 cheaper. And one thing about Protes, I mean, he doesn't go for takedowns and in a weird way, he's not particularly aggressive. You know, he, he sits back, he sits back, he waits the counter punch, and then he gets you, you know? So I think that it's it's a weird, it's a weird fight that if somehow gentling lead, like if the lead just kind of stays away, sort of, um, and lets him and gets out of this first round, then all of a sudden 9,200 busts. So let's take a look at what 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 Protest's line is in the um in the first round, just for fun disease. I bet you it's not that great. Let's see. 
Protest round one plus two hundred, not terrible, but um, not not a lot. Let's put it that way. Tai Tuivasa versus Jai Rosenstrang without even looking. I, I know that this is going to be a fight I'm going to want both sides of. I mean, these are heavyweights. I bet you that Rosenstreak is at least minus 110 inside, even though it's he's not even that expensive. Let's see. I mean, minus 155 inside for a $8,900 fighter. It's good enough for me. And Tuivasa at 7,300. I mean, he's probably going to have a plus 250, right? Plus 215 inside, that's an amazing play. Okay. So, as I mentioned, there are a lot of good plays here you can make. And this is a this is a very, very good underdog play. For example, like Suivasa, I mean, when he wins, he's going to win like 33% of the time. I mean, he's probably going to get a knockout. I say probably. I mean, can't imagine him winning without getting one. Um, so, I, I think Suivasa is an extremely strong underdog to go along with Ramos. And they're, they're different types of underdogs, you know. Tuivasa has got the KO upside. Ramos doesn't have a lot of finishing upside, but he's got a little bit of a floor with his with his takedowns. And uh, in his wins, he's probably going to score okay. So both these guys are really good. Rosenstreak, obviously, really good, um, as is uh, Tuivasa. Um, moving up, we have uh, kind of a tricky one, uh, Gamrod versus Hooker. Tricky because Gamrod at 9,300, I mean, he's going to need a number, right? Uh, and, and how is he going to get it? He's not going to get it the way other people are going to get it. Like His his inside the distance line is going to be pretty poor. I would say plus 200 at most. Let's see. Um, Gamrod inside plus, yeah, plus 300. I mean, how do you do that? How do you play a guy who's plus 300 inside the distance of 9,200? Well... Uh, if things go his way and he gets the, uh, the the chain wrestling thing going on, like he did in this fight, this fight, and this fight, he could score. Now, the thing is, is though, he hasn't really done it. You know, this one was a KO, so that's that doesn't exist. And he hasn't really put up an enormous score with the exception of this of this one. The, the Dos Anjos fight is last fight. I mean, this is, and this is what people are going to look at, you know, like 11 takedowns. I mean, you get 11 takedowns and seven minutes of control time. I mean, that's a number. It, it's a number, and that's 130 points, and that wins. You know? That that outscores all the guys. It, that's going to outscore no one. It's going to outscore literally everybody that was 9K and higher because this is the only guy that's got these wrestling up, this wrestling upside. Um, the only way the other guys can get can sniff 130 is if they get that quick win bonus, you know? Um, and that's hard to do. It's hard to win in a minute. Um, and Dan Hooker, I mean, I don't know if he has it in him to stuff like 11 takedowns, if that's what this comes to. And Rafael Dazanias is a good wrestler. I mean, this is this was a crazy performance here. Um, so even though his inside the distance line is poor, you got to put him right up there with all these guys. It's the it's the Nick, Nick Hole guy who's kind of intriguing to me, you know, because we think he's going to be a wrestler, right? <laughs> um, uh, but it's not 100% guaranteed, where we know that that's what Gamrot's going to try to do. But who's better, Nicole at lower ownership? Is he going to be lower ownership than lower owned than Gamrot? Good question. Nonetheless, Gamrot has that takedown upside that we want. It's definitely in the mix with all those big favorites. I, this next fight is one that's probably going to fade. Like, like Kayakara France... This is a guy who, for me, uh, is someone I'm probably going to be uh, not playing. Um, whenever you have just like a pure striker on a card like this, you just you just need a better reason to play him. I mean, his inside the distance line is probably going to be plus 400 at the best. Let's take a look. Not even plus 500. Urseg, unfortunately, he, he loses to these other guys as far as their metrics go. The plus 275 inside the distance. And, the, and, and what might make up for that in some matchups is the fact that he might have some takedown upside. The problem is, is that Kai Kara France, if he could do nothing else, it's defend takedowns. So um, I think this is going to take place on the feet, and I think the fight's going to bust, and you're probably going to want to X this out. Either organically, it's probably going to end up being X'd out, or if, you, if you're the type that wants to do this, just X it out of your player pool before you even, you even fire it up. 
Um, so we talked about this and we talked about the Duplessis fight. I, just to review, I think I think you should go 100% du Duplessis. You've seen all the different fighters that I can kind of weave into these lineups. So the less decisions you have to make later, the better. And I would, I would, that's what I would do. I play Duplessis with as many of these other things that I can kind of stomach and jam in. And if in fact you get one of the lower own combinations that give you the opportunity to make, you know, to cash for a good amount, if Duplessis does win, um, then if you feel like it, go ahead and hedge. Go ahead and bet Izzy minus the one thirty or whatever he is. What is he by the way? What 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 are the odds of this fight? It's not even it's pick him. So I don't know. That that's that's my initial take. Uh, I might change my mind over the next couple of days, but I I really really doubt. It. Uh, that will do it. Uh, stay tuned for a betting breakdown and stay tuned for a um, for the line of construction video, which is also going to be coming well, probably Friday. Good luck, everybody.